Today on Let's Talk Bitcoin, we're joined by Ross Mincer of RossMincerBand.com. Ross, you're a musician and uh, have been working with cryptocurrencies for a while. Uh, really, thank you for joining us today to, to share your experience with Bitcoin. Thank you, Adam. It's great to be here. How long have you been making music and how long have you been interested in cryptocurrency and where do those things overlap? I've been making music my whole life. I'm 26 now. I started um, I, you know, playing the saxophone as an eight-year-old, so it's been quite a while. Now I sing mostly and produce music. I heard about cryptocurrency fairly recently, actually, uh, maybe only about a few months ago, um, and it really resonated with what I was doing. I had been doing a lot of social media advertising to connect with people with my music around the world. And I've always been thinking about how should a musician be fairly compensated for his work. When I started to learn about digital currency and the different options out there, it, it you know, it's like a light bulb went off. Like this is the missing link to monetizing in a fair way the work and music that I'm making and creating. When you discovered that, what was your next step? What was your first attempt at, at using this to do that? Um, first, it was to, to investigate and to, do, to try to understand um, Bitcoin and the other all currencies and what kind of possibilities are out there. The first step is simply I just you know put my address, my Bitcoin address, my Dogecoin address to start accepting donations on my website. I mean, that was the first thing. It's pretty easy, too. Interesting. So now, you, you accept Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Those were the two cryptocurrencies that you went to. That's where I'm at now. It could change. You know, um, it, it really could. Uh, Litecoin too, maybe. I'm still learning a lot. Let me ask, what was it the thing specifically, usually when we talk to people and they accept more than one cryptocurrency, more than Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin and Litecoin because those have been kind of the gold and silver analogy that people have liked to use. Yeah. Is there anything in particular about Dogecoin? Was it just the timing? It was getting big and so it was exciting to be involved with? I mean, like, help me here. It was the community. I was in a certain place in my life and I I don't know, it just, it just kind of hit me. It, it was one of these... Um, it, it just made me feel good. I, I liked seeing the interactions of people on the subreddit. I liked what people were, were talking about it, it and, and I wanted to be a part of it. You wanted and to so support it basically is what it sounds like. I just wanted to be a part of it. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't, yeah. <laughs> there was the first Dogecoin party we had, I think last week in New York City and I let them use my sound system. That was at the NYC Bitcoin Center. It was cool. So, How's that going? And do you notice any differences between the Bitcoin side of things and the Dogecoin side of things as far as you as an artist looking for, you know, remuneration? I feel like at this point, it's too soon to really tell. Um, I I'm curious to see, you know, it's like a lot of people I've connected with so far, unfortunately, haven't even heard of of digital currency or know very little about it and they're not using it yet. And I believe that once everybody knows, like more people understand what it is and the potential and, and what it's capable of doing, then I'll be able to see some results more. Because right now, you know, if I'm not really like targeting this niche group of digital currency users, then it's it's hard to tell right now. Well, let's talk about that for a second. So I think you're going with a tipping model, right? Are You're using a tipping model? It's Yeah, right now it's just a tipping model. Okay. Absolutely. So I don't think that that's an end game for you. You're not actually against selling your music. This is just a first step. Or are you uh, producing your music, giving it away for free so that you get the maximum distribution and then just asking people to give you value for the value that they get from it, which is very similar to what we've done with Let's Talk Bitcoin uh, in our listeners. Exactly. Base. You know, I mean, what is it that you hope to achieve from this? Are you looking just for like for feedback, you know, in the form of, hey, I got a bunch of tips. That means people like what I'm doing. Or are you actually trying to, you know, would you like to live off of these funds? What kind of how would you like to see this develop? And are tips the ideal vehicle for this? Or do you think that this is kind of a stopgap? That, that might that be might a big be, question. <laughs> a bit, yeah, it might be a larger question. Like, like just like I, I think that's more of like um, how is the artist or content creator treated in society? Like, how do we look at the artist? In a lot, but but I think with the digital currency tipping bots for for social media for Twitter, they're making one for Facebook. I think that's such a big deal because like I've connected with so many people using social media. Now that that something like this is capable, where uh, a person around the world can can support me in a small way, you know, instantly from like their virtual wallet to mine, that even is a big deal. 
there's this coin called uh, Florin Coin. Um, one of the developers is actually spends a lot of time at the New York uh, NYC Bitcoin Center. His name is Joseph Viscella, and he had an idea with the protocol of, of, of the Florin Coin, where you could send a message when you send somebody money. So you could also send, let's say, your email with your money, and. He has this idea called the Florin Exchange. And so basically as a musician, like many times, like people have sent me their email and I've sent them my music for free. But now the idea that they could send me, you know, some money and their email in one one deal. And then I get the money and I send my song to them. And there's no third party platform like there's no bank or itunes or, or, or any other group that get their hands on that and that to me seems like a really big deal that would be so cool if there was something like that so it's a bit like somebody taking so somebody wants to order something from you so it's a bit like they you know take like a bunch of coins and then wrap a message around it and throw it at you and you don't know necessarily who threw it at you but you've got the address on the message and so you know where to send the thing in return yeah, it's it's really cool. I mean, it's like so it's it's like it's like the virtual if you like came up to me and bought my CD for like, you know, 5 bucks and I gave you the CD in person. Right. It's like it's it's like really is person to person virtually. Like and that's really cool, you know? That's really interesting. So, we're actually going to turn this around now, Ross, because I think I have some ideas that I'd like you to ask me questions about. Um, but but real okay. quickly, I just want to tell you um, another thing you might want to check out for your music. If you do want to um, offer some for sale, is a site like CoinLock actually, which is like it's like a kind of virtual vending machine where you set up a contract once. You'll like upload a song, put the price that you want, put the address that the payment should go to, and then you can distribute that website you know that has the all the information for it. And whenever somebody buys that from you, it sends you I believe it's ninety eight percent of the amount Amount. The site keeps 2% and that person gets to download one copy in their browser without having an account or logging in at all. It's just wow. it happens right there. It's super cool. There are all of these really interesting automated tools because what you're saying is great, but it's very manual. You have to send out a copy for each one of these. So you could do both. Yeah. Anyways, I, I just wanted to uh, share that with you. Um, really, is that called CoinLock? Yeah, it's called CoinLock.com. I'm going to check that out. Recently, I talked about LTB coin, which is a coin that we're creating for the Let's Talk Bitcoin network that we're going to accept exclusively for advertising. And there are a couple of other things, a couple of other uh, value adds that you'll be able to essentially do with it that you won't be able to do or that'll be much cheaper to do with LTB coin compared to Bitcoin or compared to dollars. Um, one of the other really interesting use cases for this, Ross, is artists who are new and unsigned can essentially use this same model and create a coin that they guarantee they will accept for their music moving forward and they will accept for certain things moving forward. So for a high amount of your coin, you might have lunch with someone or something like that. Uh, in the beginning, when you create these, you're going to create them for nothing because the value that you that is imbued into them comes from the fact that people like your music or like whatever it is that you're doing and have an interest in supporting it and buying it and think that it will become more popular in the future. Because all of these currencies, wow. exactly right. So because all of these currencies are deflationary currencies, where all of the money supply is created at once, and then it's just an issue of distributing it over a period of time based on however or whatever makes sense with that particular coin. You wow. can create stakeholders. So if you uh, like sell early CDs, for example, you could include a couple of your coins with each CD that goes out and make all of those people stakeholders. If you wanted to raise money, you can sell some of the coins in an auction sort of environment or uh, sell them to people who really like to support you because again, they're not just throwing money at you. You're actually giving them something back valuable in return. return. And if you're successful, of course, if you fail, then then probably won't be worth anything. But they were never worth anything to begin with. But if you succeed, you have all of these people who are vested in your success and gain along with you. It's very interesting. It's That is a really cool idea, Adam. And thank you for sharing that with me. I, I see it. And Gosh, I, yeah, that would be that's 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 really cool. Um, I hope somebody does that. I could see somebody potentially doing that in the future. I mean, well, have have you have uh, how far are you along with your uh, LTB coin? I originally thought I was going to have to create a new altcoin, but what I discovered is right. that actually many all the things that I want to do. I can do with user-created assets on one of these other platforms like MasterCoin or Counterparty or eventually Ethereum and BitShares and things like that. And NXT also, I believe, just rolled out their asset exchange. So all of this stuff was impossible like three weeks ago. And now there are multiple platforms that you can actually do it on right now. So yeah, no, absolutely. Wow. Did I blow and, your mind? Um, 
You did a little. I, you know, it's like, it's, it's really open. It's just open and interesting what you can do with these digital currency. It's It really is interesting. I, you know, yeah, I'm curious. Like, maybe, you know, would I do that? I guess, like, the stuff you just said is a little bit over my head. Like, yeah. even if I was trying to, like, you know, like, like let's pretend I'm, like, I really don't know um, – that much at all but like is there like a site i can go to that <laughs> that i can like put my ross mincer bank coin like and then press like a create button is that possible yet well actually it is there is a site called coin gen that will let you do that but the problem there ross if you create an altcoin you are basically starting from the ground up and you can fork anything out there because the uh the uh, the cryptocurrency ecosystem is open source, so any work that has been done in the open source, you can take from the you know current iteration of it and create your own copy and start building from there. So it's very easy to exactly. bootstrap in on that side. But what you do need to do is you need to mine. You need to actually have right. people who are supporting and, and providing uh, security to the network and uh, essentially powering the transactional engine. Whereas right. with a uh, Ross Mincer coin, maybe you won't have that in the beginning. And so it creates a situation where in the very beginning of a coin, it's very dangerous to be small because someone can take it over and, you know, just kind of have their way with it. But with these meta coins, essentially what they're doing is they're altcoins that are built on top of Bitcoin or they're just altcoins by themselves that have the ability to create other coins on top of them through a simple user interface that takes, you know, somewhere between one and ten minutes. And literally, it. it would just be like filling out the name and putting in the amount that you want to create. And if there are any specific rules or contracts that are going into it, you include that. And so it becomes less about the technical hurdle and much more about what are the rules for your currency, right? What, what are the Got things it. that add value to your currency and what are the rules under which they will be sold or distributed to other people? So... We've we've got way off course here, clearly, but uh, but it's it, yeah. I I thought that you know it's hard to do right now because nobody's done it yet, like you said. But somebody is going to do it. Somebody's going to be first, and it's going to happen in like the next sure. month. Joseph's idea with the floor and exchange was like there'd be like many different artists selling their music, and so I guess like yeah, like if it wasn't just my band, but like let's say it was like you know, a record label, like, and, and they all used, you know, one coin and maybe that would help that issue of somebody like taking it over at the beginning, kind of getting it out of the nascent stage of the coin into like a more mature coin. So it's safer to use. I think that we're going to see all kinds of things, all kinds of things. And a lot of them are not probably going to work, but some of them will. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I mean, if you don't fail, you're never going to achieve anything. So I think with all this stuff, we need to just go ahead and make mistakes because that's how we move ahead with all things, technology and music too. You know, you can't be afraid to make mistakes in music if you want to get better. We're uh, playing out with one of your songs here. Um, is there uh, so, so, so cool. Uh, so Ross Mincer, uh, com. Any final comments here? <laughs> no, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be on the show, and uh, I think the show's great. So thank you so much, Adam. Thank you very much, Ross. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. And when your heart and nerve and sin you have served their turn long after they are gone. So hold down when there's nothing in you and tell me what you said to them to hold down.
CryptoKit is the world's first Chrome browser Bitcoin wallet. It's the easiest, fastest Bitcoin wallet payment system. With a simple one-click install, it takes just seconds to get your wallet set up. And because CryptoKit finds the address and payment for you, there's no more fussing around or tab switching. CryptoKit is more than just a wallet. It comes with a preloaded PGP encrypted social network, news feeds from Reddit and Google, and up-to-date charts from exchanges. Finally, CryptoKit directory allows you to make two-click payments with any of the BitPay merchants. Once you install CryptoKit, you won't need anything else. For more information or to download CryptoKit, visit CryptoKit.com.